last little portion, uh, we're going to uh, do a recorded game. Uh, this was the game that I was planning on doing last week, but uh, unfortunately I was I was ill. Uh, I wasn't feeling the greatest last week, so uh, I decided to not do uh, a replay just because my throat was starting to give out. Uh, but uh, the game for this week is going to be uh, a game submitted by Grow74. It's called uh, Grow74 Game for Zuda. Um, and his question was, what can he do better? He's just looking for general gameplay improvements. Uh, he is, uh, I believe, playing Germany against Japan in this game. I haven't watched this game yet, so uh, this is my first uh, my first instinct on this. Indeed, he is playing Germany. So uh, I'm going to pause the game right at the start. Um, I just want to take a quick look around of the map. Uh, in general, for what, what I do with this, uh, I'm just trying to look to help people improve. Uh, so we'll be watching from Gro's perspective, the uh, German player. Let's just quick check what Civ he is against. Uh, he is against the Japanese player, so um, I was correct. Uh, one other thing to note is the map is New England, which is uh, uh, can potentially be uh, a tricky map uh, for this matchup uh, just due to the fact that uh, your hunts can sometimes be a little wonky but uh, let's see what happens here uh, girl playing uh, girl playing the German civilization and uh, here we go so uh, starting by herd I mean you got a herd right like that's fine uh, oh where's this <laughs> where's the settler wagon going like so settler wagon has been walking a long ways and he's not actually doing anything walked a little bit extra there still haven't queued up a villager yet like you should have a villager in queue with your first hundred uh, resources a little bit of idle time here uh, all of these things are just things that are uh, burning your time um, it could be improved uh, but I guess that's not too big of a deal. Just try and improve those things, right? Like that just comes with being comfortable with the sieve. Um, right. The map was New England. Your hunts were pretty far away to start with, so you're going to have to herd very well to get those herded. Uh, I think this is a little bit of a mistake. I can see your town center is way pointed over to this deer to the right-hand side here. Uh, I think this first villager should be popping out on this top side and should be starting to herd this hunt. Uh, just due to the fact that, I mean, you always want to be herding as much as possible with normal settlers and not settler wagons, just because you don't want to be herding with two population worth of villagers. So I think this guy should be popping out over here to the north side, just so that you can herd this hunt back here, um, so that you can start to get that working towards uh, towards your base. And we'll see whether or not that actually ends up mattering uh you should definitely i mean you definitely will want this hunt underneath your town center before you start aging um your herding in general has not been very good here i mean you just, like haven't shot it again like in a long time so work on your herding that definitely could be improved like this there's no reason for this not to be underneath your town center you can see like the animals starting to wander around uh, a little bit like you should have okay there you herded it um but you, you could have you could have had that herding and had like a dead deer underneath your town center already for your for your villagers to pop out on immediately so um there's that uh you can micro this treasure feel free to kite that uh, oh kind of bugged around the uh bugged around the trees a little bit that's nice uh that's annoying nothing you can do about that like dude shows up hopefully you get the treasure still Uh, kill it, get it. Oh, he got it. Mm, that's annoying. Turn radius there. Like that's a pretty high level thing though to like to to comment on like your, the turn radius of your scout and whether or not that would have actually mattered. Uh, it sucks that he got it, but that's more just a, <clears throat> a bad luck thing than. Oh shit! Your house is a milled building. Okay, you noticed it. Um, it's just a bit of a bad luck thing though. Uh, so two things here, I mean, we're, I'm gonna turn back on the thing. So we're like two minutes into this game and the two things that I've noticed immediately that I, are, are really important is one, this, your herding has been pretty poor. Uh, you're herding, like, yeah. there's no reason for you to be herding way, like to have guys way out here. Like you should have this hunt uh, up underneath your town center and this one should be working its way towards its, your town center as well. Like there's uh, no reason not to have uh, not to have both of those hunts right underneath your town center at this point in the game. Uh, that's a pretty big mistake. Uh, 
your house was a little delayed. Your house is in an okay spot at the very least. Um, two settler wagons, that looks fine. Still, like you're not hurting. Like th that's the thing that bothers me the most is the just your lack of hurting. Like these hunts are running way too much. Like th this is this is going to be a big problem. Imagine if Japan builds a shrine out here as well and like starts taking out like your second hunts. Like that's going to be so annoying to deal with. Um, could be really detrimental. Like look at look at how far these hunts have like started to wander. That's uh, actually a really big deal uh, ooh, and they even went the wrong way so like this this is like the first thing that you can really improve that will like gain you like 10 PR like seriously if you can just get it to the point where your villagers aren't walking around this much and they're just like gathering right underneath your town center the whole time like that's plus 10 PR right there um, just get in control of these hunts because like now you've just like had to spend so much time walking in transition like right like you're probably going to do some sort of like semi ff or whatever so you're going to have to like walk villagers over to your coin mine and they're going to have to walk from all the way over here all the way to over here instead of like popping in the town center and then over to the coin mine so yeah. that's a long bit of walking uh there as well um Stuff like that really adds up in the early game, especially with a sieve like Germany where you have five settler wagons, which are like really important to be controlling really well. So uh, also your second hunt hasn't, like it's wandered completely out of sight. Like I, I, I would be very fearful that this is going to get shrined at some point in the very near future. Uh, and there goes like the long migration that I was talking about, like right, settler wagons, like having to make that long trip all the way over there to that coin mine uh, is pretty annoying. Uh, looks like maybe you're going to herd here. That would be good. Uh, definitely would be worthwhile. Uh, I'm going to comment a little bit on your build here. I don't want to hound on builds too much, but in general, like you should be chopping wood with purpose with Germans, and this doesn't feel like you're chopping wood with purpose. Uh, you're j you've just like randomly got like two settler wagons chopping wood. You should either be chopping wood for a market and market upgrades, or you should be chopping wood for a trading post. But like two settler wagons just randomly chopping wood because like you think you should be chopping wood isn't what you should be chopping wood for uh, with Germans. So uh, chop wood with purpose. Uh, that would be another thing that I would comment on. Uh, this hunt still is bothering me, but I mean, I've mentioned that enough times. This hunt still, like, heard it more. Heard, 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 heard. Every, like, seven seconds you can shoot those guys. Get them, like, right up next to your town center. Uh-oh. There's a scout over here. He's he's building shrines. Your second, your second hunt's going to get shrined. Uh, it looks like you're doing some sort of FF, maybe some sort of semi-FF. There comes a market. Like, you could have had that market up a long time ago uh, if you would have been chopping wood f with a purpose, like I mentioned. Um, you're not just not chopping wood with a purpose. Like, it, it feels like you don't really know what you want to do. It's still not hurting your hunt here. Built a market, but haven't gotten any upgrades. Uh, ooh, I hope... Okay, so that's a bit awkward. So notice one thing you just did here. Uh, you just sent like a villager that was like gathering over here all the way back over here to uh, to build houses, which is in general not that good. One thing you want to try and avoid doing is having villagers like just walk uh, walk around a lot in general. So let's let's think about like the pathing that your villagers have taken. Let's let's take this settler wagon. Let's just assume like that or this villager. Let's assume this villager was like the first villager you trained, right? And so he he's walked out here. He's hunted some, he's shot some hunts, he's like wandered around out here a little bit trying to herd some hunts, and then he's walked over here to this tree, he started gathering on this tree, and then he's walking over here, he's going to build this house, walk over here, build this house, and then maybe he'll like go back to chopping wood on one of these trees, or walk over to this coin mine, or like walk way the hell back up here and start herding this hunt, which may or may not have a shrine coming up on it, nope, not yet. Um... But in general, that villager has taken like a big long journey of just like wandering all over the map. Whereas if you had herded your hunts effectively, it would have gone like from town center to hunt, to town center to coin mine, to town center to tree. Like you could have like centralized your entire economy like in this little box basically. But instead, instead of having your economy in this box, your economy is in this box which is far less efficient with just like in in terms of like how much your villagers are walking uh, just think how much do you want your villagers walking do you want them walking like realistically 
this is all this is the entire distance that your villagers should have to travel this game this encompasses your coin mine on the left uh, plenty of trees together all the wood you would need for market upgrades trading posts anything like that and assuming your herding is good all of your hunts can fit in that box as well so you could have all of your villagers not have to travel outside of this box for the first like seven minutes of the game which is like really really good but instead your villagers are confined to this size of a box which is a lot more room for error a lot more room for taking pressure from raids a lot more uh, vision that you have to like you just have to be moving your camera around a lot more to be able to manage this and so it's a, a lot more difficult just to like see stuff in, in general so um, try and centralize everything as much as possible okay here you're gonna go hurting uh oh this looks like that that looks like a shrine to me nope not yet they're just standing in a goofy oh no and then you shot them the wrong way uh, you're also pop capped here which naturally isn't good looks like you're gonna fix that here momentarily uh, do have your stable coming up have hunting dogs at least you're getting some upgrades using your market that's good um, it's still so much like your villagers are just walking around so much like spending so much time walking around like look at now now let's take into consideration the size of that box that box stretches from here all the way down to here where in which point I would still argue that that box could be right here so that's one illustration that I think is actually really good uh, would you rather have your villagers gathering from this box or from a box that stretches from here all the way to here and I think anyone could reasonably assume that gathering all your villagers in a box this size is going to be much better uh, you've trained calves. Those calves should immediately be doing something, whether it's seizing a shrine or scouting. Like you haven't really seen what he's doing uh, aside from building a barracks. Um, could be applying some raid pressure. Uh, hopefully, you move forward there. Um, your car order is good. I think you've gone two two settler wagon, three settler wagon, uh, seven hundred coin. Uh, let's hope you don't actually go expo poik like your deck uh, suggests and uh, are aging up. Just made a couple of Ashigaros, that's fine. Like, just gonna make Ashies. It's gonna be difficult to raid Japan, anyways. Uh, especially, this guy's built his buildings fairly wisely. Um, it's gonna be difficult uh, to actually get into raiding down. The important thing here is to try to not lose these calves so that you have these calves moving forward uh, to the next stage. Uh, still not hurting a lot in your base. I don't think you've built steel traps. You have an awkward as hell amount of wood. Like It feels like you just don't know what you're going to do with this wood. Uh, so try and be more consistent with your wood gathering. You did make him bell all of his villagers, which is good. Uh, just try and make sure you don't lose these. As long as you don't lose these, like that, this has been pretty good. Losing one's fine. But keeping as many hit points on these as possible is also good. The box grows in size. Look at the box, the size of the box of your villagers now. It's like, it encompasses like this whole area. It's like really, really big. Aging up, aging with the marksmen. Uh, don't know that that's necessarily good. Uh, six skirms, age up is okay. This wall's unneeded. Uh, the thing is, the thing about aging with the marksmen is like, you have resources, like you could have had a trading post now. If you, if you had a trading post with Germany, which you definitely should have uh, by this point, you you would want to be aging fast because then you could be shipping like eight skirm, seven skirm, stuff like that. You would have like shipments in bank. Uh, but because you don't have a trading post, you're, you, you don't have a shipment to send, so you're probably thinking, well, I can age up slow because I don't have a shipment. And that's in general true. If you don't have a shipment to send, like... You might as well age up a little bit slower, but the reason you don't have a shipment to spend is because you don't have uh, you don't have any trading posts. Um, these walls, especially against Japan, are a complete waste of villager seconds. Never build a wall like this. Like this, this wall is not accomplishing anything. Like Japan's not going to raid you from over on this side, right? Like if Japan is raiding you from over here, like you've already won the game. So like that wall is just a waste of wood and villager seconds at this point. This one is arguably maybe a little better, uh, but still I would say is not worthwhile. Uh, the cab's still being pesky. You're still doing an okay job of denying uh, your villa, uh, your opponent from gathering from his coin mine. That's pretty good. Uh, 
As long as you, like I said, continue to not lose those. Oh, be careful with them. You don't want to lose them. They are dwindling in numbers. Uh, well, now you're starting to lose them a bit carelessly. Rax is up. Villagers are idle. And from this point, like, I mean, you've done some okay stuff. Like, you've denied your opponent uh, some gather time. Uh, stuff like that, but... I mean, he's Japan. Like, what has he got? He's up to 120 Shrine Pop. Uh, he's probably got Heavenly Kami. He's sent four Vill. He's sent 700, 600 Wood a couple times. Uh, like, he's in a pretty good spot. Uh, he's got basically all of your next hunt shrined up, which is going to be impossible to deal with uh, fairly soon. You may still be, like, I don't know, may maybe you'll be okay here, but um, still looking a bit tough. Feel like you may just like get out of some bunch more ashes and just kill you. Uh, this trading post is about six minutes late. That should have been coming up in transition, and that comes back to like chopping wood with a purpose. Like in in the in transition to the second age, you just like randomly had two guys chopping wood. Like if you would have put like six guys on wood and then just built a trading post, you could have had this trading post a long time ago. Um, oh, look, that shrine did pop up in your second hunt. This is your second hunt, by, well, maybe even arguably your first hunt, by the way, that he's got a shrine on, like, two screens away from your uh, from your town center. Like, that's that just can't be allowed to happen. Uh, oh, okay. Well, this this is a huge issue. And this is maybe the, this is maybe the biggest issue of them all so far. Um... We call it the Fast Fortress Age because you get to the Third Age and you send Fortress Age units, not because you get to the Fortress Age and send a fort. Uh, this fort will do precisely nothing. Uh, best case scenario, you get it down in like a super aggressive position, like down here or something, and Japan continues to make units and doesn't leave his base. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, well, I guess worst case scenario, like you die before it even becomes relevant, but... Uh, likely scenario, it ends up like in a place right here, accomplishing nothing, and being a glorified barracks that you already have. I mean, you've already sent resources into defending this choke. You don't need to sink more resources. If this was eight skirms, uh, you'd be in a lot scarier of a position, but uh, it's not eight skirms, and it's a fort, and your timing pressure here is not going to be scary. It's just going to allow Japan to continue to mass units, he might get aged up. Maybe he just continues to mass units, but definitely don't need a fort. Like, take that out of your deck. If you're, it, I, I would just remove that. Like, and just you should be a hundred percent sending eight skirms right now. Like, that is definitely what you should be sending. Training skirms. Your, your composition. Yeah, this is like it doesn't matter. Like, even if that gets up, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, he's got a lot of ashes, which are, I mean not the greatest against your composition, but he's got enough of them that it's probably just going to work. Picking off some... Oh no, I've got no anti-cav. Hmm. I mean, from this point, like, Japan's just Japan. Like, even if it's not a high-level Japan, like, this is why a lot of, like, lower-level players find Japan difficult to deal with, right? Because, like, he's still generating resources just because he's built shrines. He's not spending his resources the most effectively, but he's still generating a lot of resources just because he's Japan, and he knows he's supposed to ship villagers and build shrines, and as a result of that, like, he still found himself in an okay spot, so... Um... I can see the issue here. You're not going to have any hunts because you didn't herd especially well. You're running out of resources. Even your coin lines are starting to look a little thin. Um, he's got a lot of ashes, and I think like this is probably where you're just going to like run out of steam. And he's going to be Japan, and you're going to be Germany with not a lot going for him. Like here, here again, you're sending royal mint. Like. How many villagers do you have gathering coin? You have seven villagers on coin. Like, you don't need royal mint right now. Like, you need units. You need eight scrum, seven scrum. You have them in your deck. You have the scary units that you need in your deck. You just haven't sent them. So definitely send military units over the fort and stuff. And, like, you maybe still could have could have still even won. Uh, or still could win if you had eight scrum, seven scrum. In fact, you probably would be winning if you had eight scrum, seven scrum here. Uh, but you, you don't, and, like, he's probably got a whole, like, 
Yeah, he's just got so many more units than you. He's just been training units, and you haven't. Like, he maybe has even, like, sent, like, unit shipments and stuff. No, no unit shipments. But he definitely has more units than you do. Uh, which, when you're FFing with Germany, is not something you want to allow to happen. Resources are a little out of whack here. Yeah, and I think you're just going to get caught out here. Like, he's definitely got a better army than you have. Yep, your army's dead. And I mean, with how much of the replay is left, I would guess you just resign here. Like, I mean, you're pretty far behind, yeah. You don't have any hunts because he's uh, shrined them up. So, that's the end of the game. Uh, so, let's do a quick recap of the biggest things that I think you can improve from this game. Uh, one, remember this box that I was talking about and try and keep as much of your early economy and your villager movements inside that box as possible. The less you have to run your villagers around in the early portion of the game, the stronger your economy is going to be. Uh, the box that you could have had in this game should have been about this big. That encompassed your coin mine on the left, uh, enough trees to get a trading post or a market, and a reasonable distance for you to have all of your animals herded into. Realistically, your box should have been that big. Uh, and your box ended up being like absolutely massive. Uh, so try and encompass that in your gameplay. Try and keep everything as centralized around your town center and minimize villager walking distance as much as possible. Uh, the second thing I'll say is uh, work on build orders. Your, your builds just, like it wasn't very crisp. Like you didn't seem to know like didn't have a plan. Like, you were just chopping wood aimlessly. You just had, like, random amounts of villagers gathering random amounts of arbitrary resources. And we're just kind of, like, getting, uh, just gathering resources. Uh, try and have a purpose with your resources um, so that you, you have uh, some sort of formulated plan. And if you don't have a great idea of how to do that by yourself, watch replays. That's a great uh, resource that you can use. Check out uh, replays on RTS Sanctuary. Uh, check out replays on ESOcommunity.net. There's like loads of replays of players doing German FFs. Uh, loads and loads of replays. So uh, if you need help with finding specific replays, you can just message me. I'll be happy to find you like two or three like good build orders that you can follow uh, and help you improve in that regard. Uh, and then I guess finally it, it just comes down to your fortress age shipments had you still like regardless of the fact those first two facts which I think improving your build order and improving your villager walk times those are the two biggest things you can improve in your early game and then it just comes down to decision making in fortress age and you just ship bad shipments you, you shouldn't ship fort and you shouldn't ship royal mint like you don't need those shipments that those two shipments you can never go wrong with sending eight skirm or nine oolong with Germany. Like these first four buttons here, like the like boom, 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 boom. Like almost every game you play German in third age, you're gonna be sending a combination of these four shipments as your first four shipments. So take that into consideration um, and use that information wisely. Uh, aside from that, uh, just work on build orders. Uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Like certainly. Uh, nobody starts out as, as a top tier player. So um, thanks for submitting your game. I definitely appreciate it. And, uh, and I'll be happy to, uh, to do the next one. I think someone else posted a game as well. So uh, I will have one uh, for next week uh, all lined up and ready to go. Uh, but thanks to, uh, thanks to Grow78 or 74 uh, for submitting this replay. So uh, that's going to do it for SmackDown. That's the end of this analysis. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I'll be back next week, as always. I'm sure Interjection will as well. Another Saturday Smackdown. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, peace out, guys.